Hello, today we will be talking about osmoregulation in bacteria, protists, and fish. So bacteria, protists, and fish belong to the kingdoms of eubacteria, protista, and animalia respectively, and each of these three kingdoms has their own way of maintaining homeostasis through osmoregulation. So what is osmoregulation? Well, osmoregulation is sort of what it sounds like. It's the regulation of osmosis. So animals have to, and bacteria and protists, have to regulate the salinity of their bodies with regards to the environment, because if their cells are too salty in a freshwater environment, then water will rush in and their cells will burst or lice, whereas if their cells are in a, very, uh, are in a surrounding which is very salty, then water will rush out of their cells and they will shrivel. So bacteria can get around this, and they regulate the salinity of their insides and outsides, which is osmoregulation, by using some modified or protein channels in their cell membrane, which pump ions into or out of their cells. And so water potential will determine where water will flow. Water always flows from high water potential to low water potential, and the presence of solute creates a low water potential. So when the bacteria pumps ions, say, out of its body and into the environment, then water will also flow out of the bacteria's body and into the environment. And, and vice versa. The water will flow wherever the bacteria chooses to pump solute. And this is a fairly simplistic method. Um, it's just protein channels that pump ions, but as bacteria are single-celled organisms with no organelles, all they really have to work with is proteins and protein channels. Um, but that it works out fine for them. Um, Amoeba and Pyramecium are two different types of protists that use a um, more complicated way of maintaining osmoregulation within their cells or, and or bodies. They use something called a contractile vacuole. And what a contractile vacuole does, so these organisms are able to maintain osmoregulation and homeostasis using an organelle called a contractile vacuole. And so the contractile vacuole is a vacuole that will fill up with liquid um, as water flows into the cell, as generally animal-like protists, with, uh, such as amoebas and paramecium, live in freshwater environments where their surroundings are hypotonic to their cells. So water will generally rush into their cells, and amoebas and paramecium, in this video it's a paramecium, will have channel proteins uh, surrounding the central vacuole, which will pump uh, salts and ions into the contractile vacuole. And so the excess water in their bodies will flow into the contractile vacuole, where it will then fuse with the cell membrane, basically just pumping out all the water uh, in, into the surrounding environment. And paramecium and amoeba do, and other animal-like protists do this very efficiently. Um, they are able to both get rid of all of their um, excess water in their bodies, but they also are able to eliminate cellular waste, such as carbon dioxide, in, th through this method. Fish have different methods of maintaining homeostasis and osmoregulation depending on whether they live in freshwater or saltwater. So there is a particular uh, infraclass of fish called uh, teleosts, which includes most groups of bony fish. And so uh, in saltwater fish that are teleosts, uh, osmoregulation happens via their gills and specialized cells in those gills called chloride cells, which will 
pump sodium and chloride ions from their blood against the concentration gradient in back into the ocean. And this helps them remove salt from their bodies, but it doesn't help them with the fact that water is rushing out at a constant rate. So fish need to fish that live in the oceans or salt water need to be constantly drinking water as they swim in order to maintain homeostasis because uh, the salt water surrounding them is constantly uh, taking water out of their scales through their skin. As a result, um, fish that live in salt water generally have concentrated urine, which is very concentrated also with salty ions that they uh, filter out through specialized kidneys. Freshwater fish have the opposite problem where water is constantly trying to flow into their cells through their skin as they live in a hypotonic environment. So to get around this, they basically have to constantly keep urinating as they swim, uh, as they're constantly taking on water and they need to uh, get, get rid of it and remove it from their bodies. Freshwater fish also have chloride cells uh, in their gills if they are tele teleosts. Uh, the chloride cells still pump sodium and chloride ions against the concentration gradient, but rather than pumping them into the ocean when they're in abundance in the blood, in freshwater teleosts, these ions that are very important to life are pumped um, into the cell and into the fish's blood through, uh, through, the, through their gills so that they can use these ions in cellular processes. Freshwater teleosts have also adapted modified kidneys which have multiple glomeruli. And so a glomeruli, glomeruli are the cluster of capillaries that are found in the Bowman's capsule uh, in, a met, in, a, in a nephron, which is part of a kin, which is the uh, un, unit or the tissue of a kidney. And the freshwater fish need to have very large kidneys, and they have adapted to have large kidneys so that they can constantly filter all of this water um, out, out of their blood that's constantly rushing in through their skin. This has been osmoregulation of bacteria, protists, and fish. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.